Hello, welcome to Curiosity, Creativity and Beyond. What is this? Today we are going to learn how to draw these amazing two cockroaches. Uh, the one on the left is, I've been reliably informed, a Madagascar hissing cockroach. And the one on the right is a Brazilian giant cockroach. So I am just amazed of how big these are. Like if I use my ruler very carefully, these are nearly, nearly five and a half centimeters long and almost two centimeters wide. And this one with the wings is two and a half centimeters wide. This is just amazing. I have put them side by side so we can look at them before I jump into sketching because they're both cockroaches, but they are so different. The first thing I notice is this one on the left is very, very shiny. It has segments. It, the color is brown and here is more black and it has two big antennae, one on each side. And do you see that shiny? Uh, yeah, it's, that shine is amazing. This one here is also shiny. But the first thing I notice is that it has like almost like a hoodie and like big wings on the back. Where are your wings? Madagascar hissing cockroach. Oh, you don't have any. Okay. Well, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I notice is the difference in color because the wings are on top of this cockroach. It gives it like this very nice golden color. And look at that spot right there in the middle. I can also see the antenna poking out there. And because these are preserved specimens, I can only assume that it had another antenna here, but for some reason it lost it either before it was preserved or during uh, preservation. And then I also see their legs. These ones here are very nicely preserved. So they're going to be my uh, reference. The other ones I can see they're hiding underneath. And because these are borrowed specimens, I need to be very careful and I cannot just be flipping and moving. I should not touch anything. This is so cool. I also noticed this one has like tiny dots on the sides. There's so many interesting things that I want to draw comparing these amazing cockroaches. So shall we begin? I'm going to use, as always, a sharpener, an eraser. I have my non-photo blue pencil and my graphite 2B pencil. I want to start drawing this one, the Brazilian giant cockroach, because I want to draw both on the page side by side. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I am going to, um, if this becomes blurry, I'll adjust it. I think the first thing I notice is like it's a big oval overall. So that's what I want to do. I want to draw a big oval. And an oval is just the circle that we stretch. And that's going to be my foot uh my foot my blueprint that's going to be my blueprint so i am going to do it a little bit i'm going to press a little bit harder so you can see it there on the page so this is going to be uh my uh, initial oval another thing i notice is how the head piece, that kind of hoodie, has like a triangle shape and it doesn't go right until the middle. It just stays a little bit on top, almost as if there were one, two, three, four of these shapes in this body. So let's see, approximately around here. Let's see, one, two, three, and four. Yeah, I think that might work. So I'm just going to make a line here. And then, as I said, I notice it's kind of triangular. That's like a pointy bit right there. So that's my pointy bit. 
and on each side there's like a, a triangle a triangle has three points and three lines joining those points so one two three and then what I'm gonna do is curve all my lines oh yes because I noticed that it has very curvy very curvy lines and this is just my blueprint once I go with my graphite pencil I'll be able to curve these a little bit better but for now that is going to be it I think it's a little bit more curvy this way and that's why I love using the non photo blue pencil because I get to do all these changes I can even actually place now this like very interesting brown brown shape here for later and I can even draw this whoop, little antenna there I'm gonna draw what I see so I'm not gonna draw the other antenna there although as I said I suspect at one point this cockroach was born with two antennas and then oh my I see this wing is overlapping so all these is just this massive wing that is overlapping and overlapping just means on top of each other and it then beautifully curves here you see that and I see more things because I see it has a beautiful curve line there it's like a brown line that crosses like this and then this brown shape goes down curves a little bit outwards and then kind of get lost there's so many things underneath i guarantee you that if i saw this in nature i could see the body of this cockroach underneath those wings but we're gonna draw what we see Let's do the same thing on this other side and look, the brown shape also curves and ends a little bit higher. So a little bit around here. So it seems like not all cockroaches then, based on these two that I have in front of me, have wings. What? I had no idea. In a way. I'm happy that not all of them have wings. <laughs> One thing I notice, and you can see because the wings are kind of transparent, is like those two boop, boop, little appendices. That's the body. And those two little appendixes, those have a name. Totally imagine that there's the body there and there in these little appendices, appendices, one here and one there. And do you see how the beautiful all these wings they're folding and i'm gonna have so much fun with them so far that's gonna be my cockroach for now the one thing i want to add is a little bit of the leg here they have six legs three on each side and i think a trick i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put my pencil on top oh okay it's gonna be it's not like this not like this it's like this and then i'm gonna move my pencil to my drawing ah so that's how i'm actually gonna do it with a graphite so i can draw at the same time so if this is the leg now i move it to my drawing and i press and i'm like oh, okay so that's gonna be how the leg is let's try this other leg here that's a little bit different that's like this so let's move these to the paper put it in the drawing and it comes a little bit at this height here that's my other leg here and then these two in the back i can see a little bit of these i see mostly that one is totally almost totally bent backwards so i'm gonna put my pencil here and it's coming from there and even though it might seem that it's coming from the abdomen 
all the legs attached to the thorax, which is underneath. But again, because this is a very delicate specimen, I cannot flip it. But all the legs are attached to the thorax. But this is how we see the legs. Let's switch to graphite. And now I can add all this amazing detail. For example, I see that on the top, there's a very nice curve at the top. And then, I don't know, this kind of looks like a leaf. I wouldn't be surprised if this cockroach likes to look like a leaf, I wonder. Camouflaging so she doesn't get eaten by predators. So it has a very nice curve here and also it has a very nice curve there. Don't worry about the blue lines because after we have added color and we finish, you will not be able to see them. Believe me. I'm going to also add that little antenna, which is a little bit curved at the end. And it is a little bit thicker as it approaches the head. And again, I know they, at one point, this cockroach had two antenna, but now it has only one. What happened there? I would like her to tell me. What was that adventure? The day I lost my antenna. I'm going to continue drawing this like beautiful, beautiful. It's kind of curvy. And it's a very, I, I like to do a small, small little strokes with my pencil because I like to go slowly and not miss a thing because this is on top I'm gonna continue this wing all the way up here and it kind of if I look at there it's almost as if the wing came almost in an angle and then it becomes like this so now i have this wing it has so much detail inside i would very much like to add a little bit of the line that we saw i love this curve here it's so elegant oh and then i have a little bit of this line here. We're going to have so much fun with the color because all these shiny stuff we can really, really make. When I'm drawing now, I see that all these um, lines, all these lines on the wings, I don't think I will be able to draw every single one of them, but at least I want to draw some to show you how they look like. So some are coming down here. And suddenly they fade away. They become very thin. And then these ones here, suddenly they expand this way. And it's kind of fun because it's almost like drawing leaves on a tree. Oh, and at the end they curve that way and some start from the previous one and they follow all these area and when they come here I can see that they yeah they all become part of the dark 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 area so i will leave that uh, without graphite so i can color that later brown but in the meantime oh yes i have some of these lines it reminds me also of a kite so i wonder 
the person that invented the kites, whether he actually looked around and thought, hmm, I am going to invent an object that is going to let me fly. And invent an object that flies. Like those cockroaches that escape. Ha ha ha. So if you notice, all these lines are curving very nicely. And you can have so much fun. And I don't want to press too hard because I would love later to add some color but I just cover all that wing with the lines that I see because I see them so clearly I hope you can see them too I'm not gonna do as many lines on this side but at least I want to make sure that I finished this outline and here's where it becomes interesting because I think I see, hmm, I see uh, the end of a wing and then I see the end of this wing. And it's almost as if this was on top and came from here. And then this one was on top of another one that is underneath. So it's interesting how they all overlap because they have two pairs, two, two pairs of wings and they're folded over this part that is called the abdomen. So we have to make sure that we include one, two, three, and then there's another one there at the very back. And do you remember these tiny, tiny appendices? I don't want to draw them very, very hard because they are underneath. So we'll just, we'll just draw them very lightly. So at least we know they're there, but we will not make a very, very strong line. Let's continue these just a little bit to suggest that brown, 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 brown color. And if you have time, you can totally do all the lines of the wings. But one thing I really like is that it's not totally symmetrical, meaning that it's not like a mirror image. This half, uh, let's see, this half and that half. It's a little bit asymmetrical in how the wings fold. So one wing ends a little bit higher than the other, which I find it. Very interesting. There's some lines here. All of this is the wing. Ooh, so pretty. And this is the brown area that we saw. I think I will add this in color, to be honest, because there's so many. Yeah, I would like to do that in color. Let's do some legs. I know that the legs of these cockroaches have different parts. The one part that I can see is the last bit which is the tibia and the tibia I can see oh my god so much so many spikes so I I'm just going to start at first doing two parallel lines which are lines okay so now that I fixed the light uh, let's go back to the legs so the legs have many pieces but the only ones that I see are the tibia this one here with a lot of spikes and this thin 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 one here which is the foot the tarsus so let's draw what we see the tibia is just two parallel lines that are very spiky and I think it's until here a little bit yeah so I'm gonna draw do you see all those spikes it looks a little bit like like a rose um, like the stem of a rose plant. Yeah, with all these spikes. I wonder if it's like for the fence. Like the more spikes, the more difficult for any animal to bite there, right? 
I wonder, I wonder. So that's the tibia. And then this last piece, the last, last piece is going to be the foot. And the foot is actually made out of much more tinier, tinier bits. So we're going to draw what we see. Like a thinner, 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 almost thinner tube. It's actually on an angle. Now that I see, if I put my pencil there, yeah, it's a little bit of an angle. So let's make that. Yeah, there we go. And what I like the most is that it ends on two little claws. One on each side. Mine and the drawing are a little bit larger, but it's um, we're going to take that artistic license. Do you see those there? So all these... All that is the foot. And that piece there is the tibia. And there's so much more underneath the body, but we can only see those two. Let's make this one here, right? I think you can see a little bit under the wing here. You can totally see a little bit of the tibia. But most of it is under the wing and it's again the same thickness as this and oh yeah all these all these spikes I don't touch them because this is a very delicate specimen but they're there and then when the tibia ends it happens like here it changes the angle from this to this so I'm gonna draw the foot in that angle. If I look very close, I can see all the bits and pieces that this is made out of. And at the end, the same as before, it ends a little bit thicker at the end with these two beautiful, elegant and pointy claws. And these are called tarsal claws because the foot is also called a tarsi because it's made of tarsus. Tarsus are the little pieces that this is made out of. Those are fun words. I think they're super fun. And here we see also, also the leg, but we see a different, hmm, it's kind of different. I get to see this first piece and then the tibia with the spikes and then the foot. So that piece that we see there that we did not see before. I think as you, my perspective is a little bit different from yours, but I'm going to adapt to yours. So it comes from there and it comes up to here approximately. Well, that is the femur. So there you go. Now we know at least one thing we have in common with the cockroach. Look at this tibia, all these spikes, ha ha ha. And because it's on perspective, which means that instead of seeing it like this, we see it a little bit like this. It looks a little bit shorter. There we go, Psh, the spikes, the spikes. And then the final, the tarsus, the tarsus form these feet, this foot with the tarsal claws. And you know what? Because we see a little bit of the of the femur on this side here, we're going to draw it as well. And I can see a little bit of this tibia with all the spikes, so that's going to be cool. And I want to make sure I draw them right. So let's see, let's put, yeah, it angles a little bit like this. And I can see just enough spikes to know that that's the tibia and then it ends a little bit around here and that is in the same angle my little foot a little bit thicker at the end and boop my tarsal claws what that is amazing. So I want to make sure that I write what this is because I do not want to make a mistake of confusing my two cockroaches. 
So this is the Brazilian giant cockroach. Dun, dun, dun. And this one, this one that I have here, I really want to add the measurements. So this one is 2.5 centimeters wide, 2.5 centimeters wide and 6 centimeters tall. So this is the width. I always confuse how to write width, so probably I'm misspelling it. Let me see, TH maybe, width, and then in length is six centimeters. What? That's amazing. And I also know fun facts about the Brazilian giant cockroach. I know that is a nocturnal. He is nocturnal and also omnivorous. And what do these things mean? Nocturnal means that it goes out at night. And omnivorous means that it likes a little bit of everything, really. But mostly, mostly decaying matter and something called bat guano, which is pretty much bat poop. So where you see bats, you will see a lot of these giant cockroaches. And it lives in South and Central America. So let's 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 put where she lives. Where where does she live? In Central and South America. Where are we gonna find it? Probably, probably we're gonna find it on a dead tree. A dead hollow tree. You know these trees that have a lot of holes inside with is where everything is is dark and is humid and also um, cracks in the rocks when you're walking around and you see these rocks that have all these cracks because they're also dark. So we can find them in these dark humid places. And we have already said that it has two pairs of wings, two pair of wings that fold over the abdomen. So I am very excited about drawing the other cockroach and compare it to the Brazilian giant cockroach. Shall we? So I'm going to do something. I'm going to move very carefully our cockroaches. And now, welcome to the Madagascar hissing cockroach. Woohoo! Clapping, 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 clapping. Because they have very similar height, I am going to make sure it was around here, the other one, and around here the other one. So they're side by side because they're besties, best friends forever. They've never met before, but, and they come from different places, but they have so many things to talk about. And now they're best friends. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw again, look at this oval shape and it's just going to be a reference. It is going to be It's just going to be my oval as a reference. And the first other thing I noticed, uh, I was going to say, the first thing I noticed when I saw it was that it has a very distinctive three parts. One, two, and three. And honestly, I, I really like those two two things. I wonder if those are horns. This is definitely the head. These two pieces are the thorax and the last piece if the, is the abdomen. And actually the abdomen has very different color. It becomes, it starts from being very black 
the thorax it becomes a little bit more uh, starts having some uh, brown here and there and the abdomen is all this very nice uh, brown color so the thing I'm gonna do is divide this and I think the head hmm I think you know what I think abdomen and thorax and head are almost almost divided in half so I'm just gonna divide this in half and I'm gonna put Let's see, the head is a little bit larger. It's around about here. Let's see if this works. So I think, I think my head and thorax are going to fit in here and the rest of the body are going to fit in here. And if you notice, the body kind of widens a little bit here. So I'm going to make sure that I reflect that here. Both are very flat. Both are super flat. But I want to make sure that I reflect that, how it widens the abdomen a little bit as it goes down. The other thing I notice is the head. So the head actually starts with a very interesting, it's like it has a little mountain there. It's very flat with two little mountains at the front. And then we have how the head goes down a little bit, goes down. And if the head is here, it ends in this, this kind of shape like this and all these are curvy 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 so I have now put my specimen here and I have my drawing here and that's gonna be much easier so I have the head and the head is very interesting it's like it's like almost like a helmet and it ends in this kind of peak shape structure here then the thorax is composed by these two pieces. It's like an armor, really. One comes up to here and is much thinner than the head. And then there's a much thinner part. And that one has two ends that curl on the side. So yeah, it's totally like an armor. It looks like a, wow, it's, is he going to battle like a medieval, medieval soldier? So this is the head. I'm going to write this here. So this is the head. And these two pieces here are the thorax where all the legs attach to on the other side. And then this part here is going to be the abdomen. So I'm going to put the focus a little bit on the drawing now. So you can see it better. There we go. The most amazing thing I have to say is all these segments on the abdomen and I'm going to count it. So there we go. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the end. I have eight segments, and I divided that between two, that is four, which means that if I divide these in half, I should have four here and four here. I'm going to move the focus to the drawing. There we go. So let's see if that's true. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, that pretty much worked. Maybe I, I will shorten it a little bit at the end. So what I'm going to do now with my graphite pencil is going through all the detail that we mentioned. The head. And on the head, I see these amazing horns. 
or at least they look like horns to me. And that tells me that this beetle, guess what, is a male. So it has like two, two big horns on each, on each end. Then we have the end of the head, which comes out a little bit and bends inwards and joins with the front. And then on the other end does that as well. And this horn, I see it on top. So in this case, it's cutting on the head. And that really depends on the perspective on how are you looking at these beetles because these are apical or top views. We are looking at them from the top as opposed to a profile view from the side or a bottom from their bellies. There we go. So we have our head. Then the thorax, these two plates, they come almost from underneath and it flattens and then curls inwards like that. And I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, there's almost like a, like a midline over there. So I'm just going to draw that end and this end as well. And this comes from underneath. So that's my first thorax segment. Let's do the second thorax segment, which also comes from underneath. And this one curls inward a little bit. And it goes a little bit down on both sides. So I am glad I'm looking at these because otherwise I would have not noticed that it curls down a little bit and then goes up. And I don't see that peak in the middle anymore. And if I made extra lines, I can just go there with my eraser and erase them. Problem solved. And now my favorite part, the abdomen. Whee so the first segment, I see that is almost embraced by these two. So it doesn't go to the side. I see that it, it's underneath. So that's my first segment. The second segment, because I already did made the divisions with blue pencil, I just need now to observe. Two, three, four, so these are my main divisions for the abdomen. One thing I notice is that on the sides. all these pieces i'm looking at the edge how they're connected to one another and the last piece here is interesting because i see a central piece i see a piece that is almost like this and then i see boop boop like two little one and two appendices one on each side and I would have never noticed had I not looked much closer. So I want to make sure that I observe the edge, how each segment is tucked underneath the next. On each side. And how different is that eh? to, <laughs> to the other cockroach? The other thing I noticed, as you can see here, is this little circles 
on each side and they become tinier and closer to the previous segment as I go up. There's so many, so many different uh, shiny stuff. So one thing that is very important is the antenna. I forgot the antenna. Look at this. They come out of the head and they curve one on each side. So I'm going to draw one here that curves and one here that curves as well. And if I look closer, they're much thicker as they come out of the head and as they curve and reach the very very tip they become almost like a hair thin so i want to make sure i put that in when i look closer they have so many hairs tiny 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 hairs this even has a curve at the end so i am sure that this cockroach should moves her antennae searching 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 there's another nice thing i like here it has like a it has like a line in the middle and then two big ridges right there and i barely i can barely see the legs of this cockroach because they're tucked underneath but they're there and they're very similar to these ones here. I think the ones I'm looking at, that tiny, tiny thing I'm looking at, that is the femur without any spikes. And then all the other spikes are in the tibia. So let's imagine that we could actually see the leg tucked underneath this uh, beetle. We would definitely, well, it would definitely be attached here to the thorax. And we might be able to see a little bit of the femur, like the same thing that we saw here, the same part. Tuck right underneath. And after the femur, we would see the tibia, which is the long one that we've seen before. And it's kind of a triangle and it has all these spikes that we saw on the other one. I can see all of them when I look a little bit underneath. And after the tibia, we have our foot and the foot made out of all these tarsal bones that we saw before. And I can see them very clearly if I look underneath with the tarsal claws. So we just use what we know about the other cockroach and just we made a leg because we were not able to see it on the specimen. So one thing that is very interesting is that this cockroach, which is the Madagascar hissing cockroach this one doesn't have any wings we don't see no wings whatsoever but guess what they are like super climbers oh yeah they love climbing even on surfaces that have nothing to grab on and it's because of all these claws the tarsal claws that they have at the end of the legs they also have six legs so we would have one two three one two three so six legs in total and what is this hissing thing why do we call these cockroaches hissers? Because they do, they do sound like shh, shh. And when, when am I going to ever, ever hear a cockroach hissing at me? Well, she might be, she might be hissing you to say, I'm disturbed. 
So I said disturbance. She senses a disturbance in the force. And she's like, what? What is that? What is that? Shh, shh, shh. She might also hiss when she, when he likes a female cockroach and he's like, hey, hey, what's up? So maybe when she, when he is attracted to a cockroach, but also, also guess where else are you going to hear a hiss from a cockroach, a Madagascar cockroach when she's been aggressive, like, hey, hey, no, that is my food. So stay away from my food when it's aggressive. So we have three different types of hissing. When she, when the cockroach is disturbed, when the cockroach is attracted, woo, he has heart to another cockroach, or when she's being aggressive, <laughs> get away from there. I am going to add the measurements of these cockroach. So it's almost two centimeters wide and five and a half centimeters long so i'm gonna start adding some color to the brazilian giant cockroach right here and i think i really want to start with a very very subtle brown color because I see all these areas. I see specifically this area being much darker, but I'm going to start very light. I am going to also add a little bit of brown here and it's much darker here than here, but I still want to add this very nice brown color to all this body here what I see there and if I lose any of the lines I won't worry because I can add them later so I want to really start very lightly and I think what I'm really coloring really here is the body with the two tiny appendices that by the way I forgot to write that down they're called these tiny tiny appendices there are called circus each is a circus and when you refer to them in plural is a circi so I'm just going to add that color there and much darker now I'm going to add a second layer I'm just going to add a little bit more pressure and it's the exact same color, but I'm just adding a little bit more of pressure on the brown. So actually now I can see that darkness coming through. And if you notice, there's like a very sharp, sharp, sharp um, brown, color brown going down there just going to try to copy that on each side it's like a much darker darker line going down there and much much darker here so I'm just gonna add a little bit of dark there and do you see those highlights those are so interesting you know what I'm going to make sure that I leave some of those areas without any color. And if you actually, hmm, I think they look actually blue. So I want to make sure that I don't add any more color on top when I go again with the brown. Because I like how these reflections sometimes they actually there's also highlights here, so I'm going to leave those without any color. I like how reflections on bugs sometimes are very colorful. So 
The other thing I notice is that that darkness comes all the way here. And there's like a very light brown, very light brown here and here in this kind of like hoodie hoodie like structure and also on the wings but if you notice because of the highlight all these areas very light so i don't want to touch that but i'm definitely going to add a little bit of brown around the rest but very lightly very lightly because i really want to go to another color which is a little bit more like a golden color. I'm going to sharpen this pencil a little bit. Because I see, oh, I see very beautiful colors here. So I want to make sure that I add a little bit of this. It's kind of a yellowy. If you have a yellow, I'm just mixing colors now on the page. And I'm just seeing what is my resulting color which i really like and i'm going to press a little bit harder on the edges because it's going to be much darker on the edges and it's also a little bit darker here so i really like this color i really do and i'm going to do the exact same thing here but i'm going to leave this area empty because i see so many highlights i even see a highlight here so i'm going to leave that um uncovered but i want to add some of these very nice color to the wings and also i see that what's underneath is going to be a little bit darker and i also see yes i see actually like some of these veins that i drew can see them so I can draw them now with my with this yellow and that creates kind of creating that like sort of kind of transparent yeah all these veins they look like veins I can draw them on top with this orange and I lost some so I'm just gonna redraw them with this golden color, which is going to add a special, very special effect. I see there's a little bit of darkness here in the midline. And here, because the leaves are on top of one another and they kind of curve a little bit. But I'm going to leave this area without anything because I like, I really, really like all these highlights and there's a little bit of darkness here and a highlight here and then as i'm going here i see much more of these um, so yeah i really really like also i'm gonna use a blue a very very normal blue not very dark not very light because there are some areas here to create a little bit of shadow on this um, yellow. That might be a good trick. That you can create areas of shadow for uh, yellow areas with a nice blue. And yeah, because I see some here. And I see some here. And here on the helmet looking uh <laughs> helmet looking structure there's some areas here that i want to add that effect and then it's just a matter of adding more layers for example if i have a darker brown i can go my tiny tiny brown i can go and add a little bit more of that darkness that i saw at the very very um origin of each wing And I'm using the same color here and here, but here I am adding less pressure. And it's just to create, as if I had made it with like so many different browns, but it's just one. It's like in here, I am going to stop 
I'm going to press a little bit lighter there so I have these two lines. And then I'm going to add a little bit of darkness here because I remember that the body is going to see is going to be seen through the wings with a little uh, circus on each side, these appendices. So even though the wings are transparent, I still see a little bit through of the actual body. And then just a little bit and a little bit darker actually. That will create a nice a nice effect. It fades away there, but I still can see maybe some of the body here, but the most part is there. And it makes sense because it's the end of the wing, so maybe it's when it's the thinnest. I don't know, maybe, maybe. And then the legs. I, I actually see that the legs are not only brown, but if I look closer, at least on the Brazilian one, they're a little bit reddish too. So I want to make sure if I have a red at hand, let's see how this would look like. Ooh, I like that effect. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Brown leg, and then I'm going to add a little bit of red. Oh, this one here too. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space there because it has a, a very nice highlight. So I'm just going to leave that space there. And also there's a highlight here on this leg. So I'm going to add color, but I'm going to leave this very, very long and thin and color um, piece is the color of the paper really which is the highlight of the leg and it depends really on when the light where the light comes from one thing also to remember is that things that are coming underneath might be a little bit darker at first and then as soon as they come out the light hits and they become lighter but when things are tucked underneath, they might be a little bit darker. So the same here, they might be a little bit darker brown. And then here. And here. What? I love how our cockroach looks like. I really do. I'm going to add a little bit of darkness here as I am looking at the cockroach. It has a little bit of darkness there. It also has darkness right by the highlights, which I find very interesting. Where there is light, there's always dark. Very nearby, if you look up closely, that is so interesting. Because I really, really, really think I see blue right there. So I am going to totally, totally add a blue where I see it. I see blue there. Ooh, that's cool. I thought highlights would only be white. But now, haha, I can add a blue highlight. And I'm going to add a little bit of darkness around these helmety looking like structure and so dark here where the head meets the wings what i love our cockroach our brazilian giant cockroach i would love to color this one so i have moved a little bit this and we can add a little bit of color uh it has so many interesting things the first thing i notice is the brown the brown around here i don't know if you can see it uh all this is very this light light brown and it also has some highlights so the first thing i'm gonna do because it has very interesting highlights is to make sure i don't color certain areas because I see some highlights here and some, some highlights there. 
So I don't, I don't want to color those. I am going to leave that color paper, which is pretty much the color of the paper. Yeah. <laughs> so look at this it has a very interesting shape there that, 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 um, those white things there. So I'm going to leave that like that. And these, oh, I see this blue. So I don't want to color this with brown at all. At all. And then this area here, there are so many. This is definitely not going to be colored. And I am not going to color this either. Or this. And there's an area here that is also very white so all those areas that i have created drawing with my color pencil i'm gonna leave totally uncolored but now the rest i'm gonna start with the brown very light and remember to respect those areas just just a, a general overall brown i see also it has red and yellow so I just want to make sure that it has an overall tone. I see also brown on this segment here on the sides, definitely. And here a little bit and here it has brown. But mostly from here up is very, very black. So I'm going to add a little bit of this color to see if, if I mix it on top, if I can get a very nice, because I really, I really see all this light brown. So maybe if I mix yellow with brown, mostly here, I will see that. I also see a very, very, hmm, almost like a line of color in between the segments. So I want to draw it with my color pencil and it goes all the way to the sides. And this is something cool because you can draw with your color pencil the same way you draw with your graphite pencil. So it goes here and it also comes here and I see these patches of color on the sides and here in the middle and then here and here. And I'm just looking and coloring, looking and coloring. I even see here it has these tiny boop, two pieces and also around these dots and i'm just trying to color it the exact same way as the specimen but if you would like your cockroach to be purple go for it because who says that cockroaches cannot be purple so I'm just going to start with the brown, adding another layer of brown, and it's a little bit darker on the sides. A little bit darker. Just a little bit darker. And also it starts being a little bit darker here. Because at the end, this is like a, like a dome. So it gets a little bit darker as it goes into the edges and definitely gets a little bit darker uh, on the edges right here and here even though it's a lighter brown when it's in the dark it might become a little bit darker and then here this middle segment here has 
I forgot to add a little bit of this color here. So I'm just going to add it there. And every time I color some piece, I, I end coloring more pieces. So <laughs> that's what I like about it. And then to make this black, it's a very, so it's a very black black. So I can either use my black or start with the brown and then add black. Um, let's start with the brown. Why not? As long as I leave all those areas that I do not want to add any color to. And the reason why I start with a brown is because, I don't know, I'm exploring and I want to see what the end result is. Maybe my next bug, I will just go directly to black. I don't know. I like to experiment. But also another reason to do that is because then everything has the same tone from the start. So now when I'm going with the black, maybe I will never see it, the brown underneath, but I know it's there. It's what some people call underpainting. So I'm just reminding myself to be careful and not go over the areas that I saw were going to be highlights. The rest I'm going still very light because black is very powerful and I want to start very lightly and then press harder as I am adding more layers. You see that there's a lot of highlights here. I don't know why I didn't see them before. So let me just carefully go one and two and three. There will be secondary highlights right there. And then So after I have done my first pass of, of very light, very light uh, black, I'm going to go and start adding a little bit of darker black by pressing a little bit harder. As I am seeing, not all the areas are going to get a second uh, dark, dark, dark pass, only some. For example, here it's going to be very dark, but as I'm going down, it starts to merge with that. Then here is going to be very, very dark and then becomes lighter. And I find that very interesting when drawing bugs is that next to a highlight, there's always, always a very dark uh, color. So that, that is interesting to see where the highlights are, where the dark areas are, because they're very shiny. All these awesome, shiny, shiny armors. And then it gets a little bit darker here as it approaches the thorax. And all those blue lines that we use at the beginning, they're almost invisible now. Because I'm going to add detail. I'm going to grab the pencil like this. Because usually I like to color like this. But for areas of detail, like here, I think I'm going to hold my pencil like this. So I have a little bit more of... Um, of control, yeah. I'm gonna put the razor here so the paper doesn't lift. And suddenly, by leaving those areas of the paper totally not covered, 
suddenly we are creating this very, very shiny, shiny, shiny head of this Madagascar hissing cockroach. Do you see that? So I'm going to do the exact same thing here. I am totally going to do that. I'm going to press harder in some areas and lighter in some areas and looking always back and forth, back and forth. There is a very light area here. It's almost like a line, so I'm not going to cover that. But I want to make sure that, yeah, you see that line over there? It's almost like a midline right there. And also highlights are very asymmetrical. They're not the same on each, each half of our um, cockroach. And that's one of the many, many, many things I like about drawing bags is that you really need to pay attention and things are not always what they seem. Ooh, mystery. I want to make sure I add that corner, but that I also leave that very nice brown area there. And here, the exact same thing. I want to add that edge. It has a kind of highlight, so I'm going to leave that there. And then super dark here. And as it goes up, it becomes this amazing highlight that we're going to take care of after. Because I see blue. I don't know you, but I see blue. I see blue. I no longer see the midline here, so I'm just going to color there. And I'm being very mindful of these highlight spaces that I took the time to create at the beginning, which are actually making the cockroach super shiny <laughs> and beautiful. Because who can deny this is a beautiful cockroach? Do you see that um, highlight over there? Those are so nice. So I'm going to try to, to leave that area by adding dark on one side and on the other side, but not there. Suddenly I have like a very nice light area there. And these new highlight areas that I didn't see at first and that I kind of added last minute, so I'm going to respect those. I'm sure they're going to create a nice effect. So our bug is so shiny, it's so, so shiny. It even has a dark area here in the middle of this highlight. Ooh, I like that. And then let's go back into the abdomen because all this black, it extends a little bit into, and you'll see that better in the photos I'll put. I'm going to take some close-up photos for you to see all the amazing colors. We have these black dots that are almost circular here, and as they go up, they start getting underneath the segment so I can only see half of them. And then those highlights that I left uncover, I'm going to keep respecting them. So I'm not going to go in there. I don't see a lot of black, but I see a little bit, a little bit of black here. And if you're pencil does weird things like that mark awesome I bet I bet I bet that adds something really cool to the drawing so don't worry if your pencil decides to do something silly whoa I really 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 like our cockroach so I'm gonna go back with yellow and paint on top of that black 
because maybe it's too black. So if I go back with another color, maybe it looks like less black. Yeah, now it looks like this color, but darker. Yay! Happy. So all these layers of colors are possible because we started very lightly, very, very light. And these highlights are very, are bringing our art bag to the next level. Absolutely. So I don't want to forget about the antenna, which is black. And the tiny, tiny hairs. Let's see. Yeah, they have tiny, but they're, oh, I don't know, maybe it's the light, but they're a little bit this color. So I want to add little, little hairs into my antenna. And I definitely want to paint at least one of the legs. And I can see that they're very dark brown. So I'm going to start with brown. And again, I'm going to leave a very large area of the femur that is not going to be covered. And this is because I would like to create a highlight. It's a very shiny leg. And when I go back with black, well, for starters, the closer I am, underneath to the body the darker is going to be but also if i leave that highlight there now we have a very nice shiny shiny leg and then i have a little shadows for the legs and then i add a little bit of black to all these spikes and the tarsal claws. And if you lost some of the lines, you could go like, for example, I see there's a very dark brown all around. So I can go with my black and follow the outline of the cockroach. And you see you recover your lines very well. So now if we reveal both our amazing cockroaches, we now have this amazing comparison of these two cockroaches. We have the Madagascar hissing cockroach and the Brazilian giant cockroach. And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? 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 Some people have these as pets. What? How? Yes, they do. They do. They do because they can. They love not only uh, rotting logs, but they also like fruit and veggies. I know. I know. So these some people keep as pets. Isn't that amazing? So thank you so much. I hope you had a lot of fun.